Welcome back everybody. On today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the difference between a stereo amplifier and a mono amplifier and when should you consider buying monos. If your dealer, your best friend, the forum crusaders are telling you to buy a mono and you're confused because you feel that stereo amplifier that you have right now in your home is sufficient for what your needs but you're thinking about pulling the trigger and spending twice the amount of money just to see if monos are really the way to go in order to improve your system let me tell you who happens to be a person that has owned over 300 amplifiers some of the best amplifiers out there my personal take let me give you my take on this entire conversation about stereo amplifiers versus monos. Let's go. Welcome back everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Thank you for supporting my website, jaysaudiolab.com. I have a lot of great content on there. In case you are interested, check out my website where you will find a lot of videos that will never make it on this channel. If you're interested in finding out which are the worst components I've ever owned, uh, what are the least reliable brands that I have ever owned, and uh, perhaps my top rankings when it comes to amplifiers, pre-amplifiers, and speakers that I have personally owned, Please check out my website. If you are looking to spend top dollar in electronics, do not overlook at the value that my website brings to the table. Become a member. Consider it. I promise you, you might be saving a ton of money by doing so because the internet is flooded with poor advice from a lot of unqualified opinions. Don't get caught in this mess. Talk to me. Set up a consultation with me and let me take you where you want to go, not where others are telling you to go. Let's go. Okay, so it should be no secret by now that I have owned some of the best power amplifiers in the entire world. Dan Diagostino Momentum S250, Dan Diagostino M400s, which are the mono version. I have owned Hegel, the Hegel H30 stereo. Hegel H30 monos. Luxman 900 stereo, 900 monos. Boulder 3060, Boulder 3050, which are the monos, which you are seeing right here. I've also owned Boulder 2160, Boulder 2150, Griffin Mephisto stereo, Griffin Mephisto monos. Griffin Essence Stereo, Griffin Essence Monos. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And I can sit here all day telling you the different types of amplifiers that I've ever owned, different brands. Okay, but that's not the point. The point is, most of those are always in front of a lot of different information that tells us what is the next best way to go when it comes to amplification. Should I buy a stereo amplifier? Should I buy a mono? Uh, what do, do my speakers really need? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you right now um, from personal experience, all right, that I have noticed that over the last few years, I would say a lot of speaker, loudspeaker designers are creating speakers that in my opinion, are very inefficient, okay? Even though the specifications may say, hey, our speaker is 93, 94 dBs, okay? I gotta tell you that I have had a few of those loudspeakers in the past, and the reality is that every time I went from a stereo to a mono or fed that speaker more power, the speaker completely disappears from the room, and it becomes a quite a transformational experience, if that makes sense, okay? So that just leads me to believe that most of the time, 
not all the time, most of the time, having more power is definitely beneficial with most speakers, okay? Now, that's been my experience, okay? And I believe some of you guys can relate to my experience. Now, when it comes to selecting that next amplifier, okay, that you want to uh, buy in, you're thinking maybe a, an, a stereo amplifier that's 20 grand stereo amp and the monos are 38,000 or 40 grand, let's just say, okay? But you're confused because you're thinking, you know, I want to buy the monos, man, but is it really worth me stretching twice the money? Am I really going to get twice the performance? The answer is simple. You will not get twice the performance from monos, okay? You are not. Just because you're spending twice the money does not mean that those monos are twice as good as the stereo sibling. It does not work that way. It doesn't work that way with most things in life, if I'm being honest. So audio is no different, okay? So don't get that twisted. The reality is that for the most part, in my experience, anytime I went from a stereo to a mono, okay, the improvements were anywhere from, I would say, depending on the brand, anywhere from like 5 to 10%, okay? Now, let me tell you who benefits from this 5 to 10% by going to monos, okay? It would be that person that has some difficult loads, okay, difficult loads speakers, typically Wilson Audio happens to be a difficult speaker to drive. Magical, we know, is a very difficult speaker to drive because it is a seal enclosure. Most speakers that are seal need a lot of power to open up and get moving for you to get those woofers to flex, for you to get those woofers to give you the base that they're capable of, okay? Vivid Audio, believe it or not, Vivid Audio, in my opinion, needs a ton of power to really sound amazing. Okay, I have seen it, I have been front and center, I have heard the G1 spirits, and every time you feed that speaker more power, it just keeps disappearing more and more and more. It vanishes from the room. The, those woofers, those side firing woofers, need a lot, of, uh, a lot of visceral control, okay? A lot of power, clamping power, to not sound boomy and exaggerated, okay? So the answer to that is, if you have a very difficult speaker, and again, as I said earlier, most speakers today are unfortunately difficult loads. The majority, okay? Not all, but the majority of the speakers today are difficult loads. Don't pay attention to this entire conversation about, oh, the speaker is 94 dBs according to the measurements, so that makes it quite efficient. Yes, it does, but you have no idea what that speaker with 93 and 94 decibels of efficiency would do if you strap on a lot more power. Trust me, it's only going to get better. I promise you this. I have done this with Focal when I had the Stellas in my room, speakers which are very, very efficient, okay? They got better when I fed them more power. I'm telling you, I have tried this before, okay? So chances are very high that you guys right now have a speaker that would very much benefit from more power, uh, usually in the form of monos, okay? So do not overlook uh, the importance of having monos. Now, with that said, another person, another audiophile that should contemplate monos are those of you who have big rooms, Massive rooms, and you are quite far away from that speaker, okay? For me, I would say this to you. That's when that excess power and overhead becomes absolutely important, okay? Because now the amps are working less to fill that big room of yours, okay? So if my room right now is approximately 20 wide by 22 deep, and my ceilings are about 8 foot tall, okay? So... Some may say, well, your room is not that big, Jay. You can get away with monos. And I can understand that feeling. It makes sense. But even in a room, in a room of my, the size of mine, mid-size room, okay, I hear the benefits that happen when you go from a stereo to a mono. I've heard it with the Griffin Mephistos. Um, and let me go over what happens when you go from a stereo to a mono, okay? 
when you have a stereo amplifier, of course, a well-designed stereo amplifier, you get about 80 to 90% of the performance of the models, okay? However, when you switch over to the models, sometimes, sometimes even the sound signature is different. And what do I mean by that? Well, for instance, I'm going to talk about the 3060 Boulder real quick. My stereo 3060 against my 3050 models that you're seeing right here. Okay, um, the 3050s sound more relaxed to me. They sound a lot more like they're cruising. They're on cruise control. Okay, when you crank up the volume on the monos, the sound just swells up side to side, ceiling to floor, right? That's typically what happens. When I do that with the 3060, although the 3060 is no slouch when it comes to power, it's still 900 watts class A, okay? The sound, although it has the same effect, it doesn't seem to be as as relaxed sounding at times. Does that make sense? It doesn't seem to be more like smooth and more like, hey, I'm chilling at this volume level, at this altitude. We're cruising at 40,000 feet, 30,000 feet in the air, and it doesn't phase me. That is sometimes what happens with a lot of stereo amplifiers when compared to monos, okay? The monos are going to just be much more effortless. Does that make sense? Um, that was also the same experience with the Mephisto monos when I compared it to the stereo uh, Mephisto, I always felt as if the monos just had at lower volume levels, okay? This is something you're gonna feel with um, monos, okay? When you turn up the volume, because you already have a lot more power on hand, the speakers actually begin to sparkle at lower listening volumes. You hear more things happening. You hear the speakers actually begin to give you their strengths, their attributes at lower listening volumes than when you have a stereo amplifier that you need to actually crank up the volume to get the amp to open up and get the speakers going. So I feel like there is more usable volume with the monos. At lower listening uh, levels, the monos were, are going to give you um, a lot of the qualities of your system you're going to hear them at lower volumes and i feel that with some stereo amplifiers that's not the case now there are certain situations in which the conversation gets a lot more difficult what do i mean by that well for instance again the 3060 we can talk about Boulder 2160. We can talk about the Griffin stereo, um, which is the Mephisto, which is still about the same money. When you're talking about this elite group of stereo amplifiers that are 50, 60 grand, $70,000 in some cases, okay, let me just say that the conversation gets a lot more difficult, okay, because now you're talking about a, a stereo amplifier that's basically built cost no object, okay, in one chassis. So they're doing a lot within this chassis to get it that much closer to the monos. So in those situations, I would say the difference is even smaller. You're talking 5%. But we all know that if you want to get that 5%, not just with audio, even in, in the car industry, that 5% to go, you know, a car ahead of the other one when you're racing it, that can cost you thousands of dollars, right, to get that slight advantage. So it becomes a lot narrower, okay, the gap between monos in a ultra high-end stereo amplifier. It becomes that much smaller. I will say that to you that at times, you know, I have not, I've never really regretted going to monos because that's just my nature, right? But yes, oftentimes... I will say that my ultra high-end monos are absolutely all I need. I mean, really, I could have lived with the Mephisto stereo. I could live with the 3060 and never look back because now I know what monos do. But if you are looking to spend your cash, okay, and you can't stretch to do monos, okay, look at the different things that I've just told you, okay? Take a look at the size of your room and the speakers that you've got, okay? Those are gonna be the biggest factors as far as 
whether you should go with monos or stay with your stereo. Quite frankly, if I was to do it all over again, let me think, I would say I would stick to basically those cost no object stereo amplifiers. Now, I know some of you guys don't have the budget. I understand you guys are very vocal about that. Um, just remember my channel is about the ultra high end. So if you're looking at affordable amplifiers, okay, I will say that it's better that you get a world-class stereo amplifier that's affordable. Think about the Luxman, for instance, the M10X. Um, think about the Griffin Essence as an example. Um, those are amplifiers that are proven to be giant killers. You're better off buying that stereo amplifier, right, than buying a set of more affordable monos that are approximately seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars. Now I'm not going to mention any names, but you know what I'm talking about. There are monos out there that are MSRP for under twenty grand. I rather get the stereo sibling. The ster I'm sorry. I rather get the stereo ultra high end amplifier for twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars instead of spending twenty or eighteen on monos from a brand that is not at the same level as the typical brands that you see on my channel. Now, one of the biggest pain points when it comes to um, power amplifiers is once you go into the entire mono configuration, now you need two separate outlets, maybe one you can, if you have a dedicated 20 amp, 30 amp, you should be okay, depending on the amplifiers that you're buying, but 20, but usually monos, you know, you need more space, now you need two shelves or two stands, now you need two aftermarket power cords in some cases. And so that becomes a lot more painful than just buying the best stereo amplifier that money can buy for your particular budget. Okay, that is absolutely crucial. Now, the last thing I want to say, okay, the last thing I need to make sure I address today, guys, okay, is the fact that there are some brands out there that make stereo and monos, okay, and the monos are not great at all. I'm going to tell you this, just because you, a certain brand makes an amazing stereo amplifier is not a guarantee that their monos are going to be significantly better than the stereo. Sometimes, it may sound like a shock to you, uh, but sometimes that's the opposite. I have heard monos that are worse than their stereo siblings. Yes. I'm telling you right now, I have had experience with that. So don't assume that the brand you currently own is only going to get better if you go to their mono configuration. Do your research or talk to me, whatever you need to do. Make sure you are not buying monos that are not superior to the stereo amplifier that you have. Monos of the same brand. That's what I'm talking about, okay? So you got to do your homework, okay? It is important. All right, guys. Well, hopefully this video has been very helpful for you all. I thank you for being here with me. Okay. And I got a lot more to come, including the Griffin Apex. That's right. With the commander soon coming soon. I hope to, I hope to have it before the end of the year. Fingers crossed that that happens. Thank you for the support. Continue to be here. More to come your way. Peace.